One of our brethren some years ago spoke of the payment of tithing as fire insurance. Nonetheless, the word of the Lord is clear that those who do not keep the commandments and observe the laws of God shall be burned at the time of his coming. The stakes of Zion are for a defense and for a refuge from the storm and from wrath when it shall be poured out without measure upon the whole earth. Try as one gets on. So I'm uh, looking at XMOLX. I'm seeing that she averages 5,000 to 10,000 views per video. So that's pretty good. I was thinking it was more up around 100,000. Little did I know. Thinker of thoughts and stuff. Which is now thoughts on things and stuff. Okay, whatever. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, there's a 4K. The failures of affirmative care. Chloe Cole's testimony. There's 9K. Stephen Levine, 13 untruths behind gender affirmation therapies for kids. But, um, yeah, he's up and down. I see a lot of two to three hundreds mixed in among thousands of views per thing. Um, who else have we got? Oh yeah, Zelf. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. And step aside, Exmo. Mm -hmm. Is it because of your website, guys? Yeah, 33K, 8.5K leaving the Southern Baptist Church. And then 10K, disturbing world of Mormon funerals. Barbie! <laughs> Nobody liked my Barbie video. Everybody had to do a Barbie video. It was just the way you had to do it. 26K for the disturbing truth about Tim Bollard and Operation Underground Railroad. Alright. Queer Mormons should be eunuchs for the kingdom. Yeah. That's what they're planning. But uh, you won't be Mormon. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the afterlife thing, too. Joseph uh, Fielding Smith, senior or junior, the one who wrote the books. I came out and uh, that was one of the things is that only those who go to the highest degree of the celestial kingdom have use for your sexual organs so the other kingdom no use for sexual organs so you don't get resurrected with sexual organs I mean it's logical <laughs> killing general conference with kindness Peace prize, please. Yeah, they know it was. He paid for it. Nelson paid for it. Bastard. That was just a sure sign you're a racist when you have to pay for an award that says you're not a racist. <laughs> From a black college in Georgia. <laughs> Good times. Uh, oh yeah, new name Noah. One word, isn't it? <clears throat> it's 
only ten minutes. Are you really doing this? I asked you for the newest change. So there's the Seoul Korea temple, but it's in Seoul Korean. Doesn't help us. And it doesn't even look like they're using, because the woman's still using the veil. So I'm not sure about that. With big balls comes big responsibility. All right, I was looking at the number of views, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, so he's up and down. Exmo Lex is consistent. Thinker of Thoughts and uh, New Name Noah are up and down. But Zelf on the Shelf are up and down at a higher level. <coughs> hmm. Okay. So I'll have to change the thumbnail picture. Every Mormon who leaves the church, whether it's forced to leave with excommunication or choosing to leave, choosing the right, CTR, <coughs> because of knowing that the church is wrong. We all know church lies. Number one, that's a fact. The church has confessed that they've lied and have claimed new lies to claim that they lied before and that they're not lying now with new lies. So it's an established fact they lie. Who's the author of all lies, Mormons? Oh, this isn't for you. Yeah, this is for ex-Mormons, former Mormons, those investigating the church. We know that they're still racist. Nelson. Paid to prove he's not racist. <laughs> oh my god. That was the first one to expose that. But uh, nobody cares. And then you, they're sexist. We all know this. You know, racist? Yeah, not just against blacks. Indians. The Native American Indians. The conference, October Conference, 1960. Spencer W. Kimball, who's an apostle then, not the president of the church. He doesn't become the president of the church until 1973. I looked this up earlier this morning when I obtained the conference report from October Conference 1960 because I had been given a little uh, email with that quote <laughs> that uh, the uh, Native American Indians are becoming a white and delightsome people now. So, prophecy fulfilled back in 1960. Uh -huh. Racism! And uh, it was a Lee, wasn't it? What was his first Name. He was a Native American who was in the, in the 70. Um, should be able to Google search it. Lee excommunicated from LDS Church. Uh, 1989. So I was under, it was under uh, Benson. Benson took over in 86. Uh, yeah, 14 years as general authority, 10 of which were under Spencer W. Kimball. And so three with uh, Benson. And so one year before. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh... Not Richard R. No, that was the apostle before George P. Lee. There it is. And then look down at the Wikipedia one. 
It was for apostasy and conduct unbecoming a member of the church. He wasn't blossoming in his rose, wasn't white enough, maybe? Bastards. <sighs> nah, it was because he wanted the church to do more to help the Native Americans blossom as a rose, according to the prophecy, as the Church of Jesus Christ had led everybody to believe that's what it was for. So the church says, no, we have people pick themselves up by their own bootstraps because we're not racist. <laughs> and sexist. Yeah, Kate Kelly. We all know they're racist. We all know they're bigoted. The whole, I'm the one that exposed this. Everybody else got fooled and punked by it. <laughs> the Respect for Marriage Act, signed in Congress by the president. <laughs> it's supposed to be respect for LGBTQIAPO plus marriages. Nope. <laughs> the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, through their special secret, sacred, special operative, Mitt Romney, got the church's exemption clause put in to nullify the respect for marriage. It's the disrespect for marriage that Congress signed into law. They just call it the respect for marriage because that sounds better. Or as the church says, it's faith promoting. <laughs> and so, yeah, the church can continue to disrespect marriage. And so they hate the poor. Yeah, I've been exposing that too. Everything they do is a criminal operation to exploit the poor, the poor. Giving to corporations rather than to the poor. Giving to corporations rather than taking care of the poor themselves. They're a religion. The Catholic charities here in Utah give to the poor directly. Church won't do that. They hoard money. And so anything that they do give, first of all, isn't from the church. It's from donations because it's not tithing, which is a protection racket that we still have yet to do for you. But I've been doing the videos for years on that. <clears throat> and so the latest one was with Brazil. The church sent down Suarez to his native land of Brazil. And, you know, he's preaching, ministering to the people, speaking with the government. Oh, the government of Brazil recognizes the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's great. Yeah, except that their government and police forces are corrupt. And so what the, do my wondering eyes do appear but a local news channel here in Utah announcing that the West Jordan police are working with the Brazilian police to learn SWAT techniques. Why? <laughs> They're a foreign government. Are we agents of a foreign government? Did they file with the United States federal government to show that they are agents of a foreign government? There are some people in higher positions who've been busted for that, but then they got pardoned by a certain criminal who's been, been indicted four times already. Hmm, interesting. He came to visit Welfare Square for a business deal. Everything is a business deal with the church. They all have ulterior motives. And they're all artil <sighs> their other motives <laughs> are for the kingdom getting it back to overthrow the government. We all know this, right? Yeah. Right? Do I need to show you? It's kind of important. It's right here. The church published it in a book. Their whole plot to overthrow the government. Isn't that great? See? Joseph Fielding Smith. And it's sad because he was kidnapped by Heber C. Kimball. 
and then brainwashed and indoctrinated as a little boy. So they grew up to be the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, spitting on the grave of his own father. As a Christian, when you call the Jews heathens for murdering Jesus, of whom is recorded in records called scriptures by authors who are Jewish. Thus, they're not talking about a literal history Jesus. It's called anti-Semitism. That's part of the racism of the church, of Jesus Christ. Because that ain't learning of the Jews. Non-Trinitarian is still anti-Semitic. The church, in order to get their kingdom, need to destroy the United States of America. They need to do away with Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. It's getting in the way. And as a certain criminal, indicted four times, convicted for uh, rape, <laughs> wrote in his book, The Art of the Deal, says that when you find that your con is getting exposed, that's the time to pull out and run. Take the money and run. That's what the church is doing. The con is up. Millions of Mormons have left. And so even though they can continue to go and prosper without any membership whatsoever, it's going to be a little difficult when everybody knows that the church is a criminal operation. And so, yeah, they've got to cut and run. And so they've got to do a cover-up, like on NCIS. I keep telling you I'm watching. And claim that they've been destroyed. And then after the prophets come back, Oh, we weren't dead after all. Oh, yeah, we own this land, don't we? Oh, look, we're filthy rich because we laundered the money into offshore bank accounts. We didn't lose it after all. Huh. Yeah. So, yes, 9-11, the day that you'll burn is an oven. Joseph Smith, in and in the Book of Mormon, warn us of this. And I've been going over with you the dates. It's the bicentennial year. It's the final year of the latter days, according to the scriptures, which is their star date coordinated attack. Not Joseph's. He's warning us. And uh, as I've gone over with you, the uh, Book of Mormon tells us the day, or the Doctrine and Covenants, section 64 which we should bring up to finish and close this this meeting with. A super sacred secret meeting of ex and former Mormons. See, because the second vision talks about the day that shall burn as an oven, and then it talks about Mormons needing to hearken, or they're going to be cut off. And so the church, as I've done in my most popular video lately, Oaks has revealed <laughs> Mormons can be safe from the burning by just being inside a stake center here in the state of Utah. But uh, Joseph Smith on 9-11-1831 section 64 verse 23 says that those who remain in Babylon will be destroyed with the burning. 
So yes, this is the warning to ex-informer Mormons. Mormons already aren't hearkening. I'm getting a whole bunch of extra hate comments and, and stupid denialisms by Mormons because of the most popular video lately. That church has made the announcement. That, and they don't get it. Because that's what the church was using your tithing for. Section 119, not section 64, which is Joseph's version of it, which comes from Malachi. Section 119 isn't in Malachi. Have you even compared the two? I figured it out. We go in for tithing settlement, as it used to be called before Nelson changed it. And the bishop has said, oh, I'm, I'm required to read over Malachi for you. And then later on, they were required to read that I had to wear the magic underwear night and day. Can't take it off. <laughs> but the part of Mount Malachi. And I'm listening to that. And then the church came out and said, well, also read what we use the money for. And it's not connecting. <laughs> it's not for fast offerings. It's not for the poor. And it used to be for temples and Book of Mormons. But then the church said, hey, let's get these separate LLC companies along with offshore bank accounts to funnel the money from those. Yeah. And so you get Temple Fund and the Book of Mormon Fund and the Missionary Fund. Every kind of thing. You can specify if the church doesn't have something. And then the church claims we can launder the money any way we want to. You can't stop us. And so... I. Uh, <coughs> It, it's blatantly obvious to anybody who's paying attention. Mormons purposely don't want to pay attention. They don't want to come to the reality that they're in a cult group that's going to murder them. Hell, bop guy. That was what I was going to look up earlier. And I blew the whole video. Got distracted. Because I'm, I'm wondering if I'm getting it mixed up with X-Files. Because X-Files had a thing where the Heaven's Gate religious group, you know, cult group. <sighs> also described as a cult. <laughs> yeah, mass suicide in 1997. Hey, that's when the Enzyme Peak Advisors got started. Hmm. Founded in 1974, Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite. Ooh, I think we're going to use that in the... Seriously? That small? We're going to find a bigger picture of that. <laughs> that would be awesome. We're going to put LDS in there instead. I uh, went on a journey of spiritual discovery. And oh, NCIS, an Islamic terror group recruiting little American kids through the internet by telling them, hey, are you looking for meaning in your life? Do you need some kind of a mission? You're not sure what to do? Are you, I'm listening to all this, and I, my jaw's dropping. I'm going, oh, crap. That was my mission. <laughs> all the television ads by the church <laughs> to recruit <laughs> was exactly the same as the Islamic terrorist group. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, yes, this is serious. Uh, identifying themselves as the two witnesses of Revelation. Yeah, no. 
was Joseph and Hiram, dumbasses. <laughs> uh, 39 members. And so, yeah, it was no long, it not nowhere near. Yeah, and it was in a house in the suburbs. So, yeah, the one I'm thinking of in the barn was X Files. March 26, 1997, San Diego County Sheriff's Department. <sighs> yeah, Jim Jones was far bigger than that. So, yes, this is what the church is going to do. And they've paid the Judas price already, guys. It's going to happen. They've been working on this for 200 years. They're not going to stop now just because I get a few hundred views, close to a thousand now on one video. <laughs> they ain't stopping. Two weeks left. I will not spare any that remain in Babylon. Even those who aren't even Mormon, and I'd be surprised if they hadn't heard about the church, but still, collateral damage. And so all of you who live in Utah, all of you are in danger. All of you need to get out of Babylon. This is serious. This is why the church lies and why they're criminal and why they have the inverted pentagram on the keystone of the doors of the Salt Lake Temple. They are going to light this place on fire and they're going to take all of you with them. You, as ex-Mormons and former Mormons, have violated your temple covenants and therefore must die. That's why you're going to die. Mormons are going to be collateral damage. And the church will come out later and say, Oh, those faithful Mormons will be in the celestial kingdom for their faithfulness. Mm -hmm. I thought their tithing was supposed to protect them from getting burned. He that is tithed shall not be burned. Did you catch that? So Oaks, when he says that, or actually it was uh, Hinkley, right? Was it Hinkley in the video I have? He means go to the snake centers and you won't be burned. <laughs> but Joseph, when he puts in, I will not spare any that remain in Babylon, Joseph is telling you to get the hell out of Utah. Whereas the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is telling you to stay. Just be faithful and keep paying. See the difference? So get the hell out. You know, I know it's tough. You don't want to move. You know, if you're okay giving up your property, you know, because you're not sure your spiritual witness hasn't tingled yet, you know, go on vacation. Visit family or friends that are outside of Utah. And hopefully not in D.C. or in New York or other targets that will be prime candidates for this day that you'll burn as an oven. <clears throat> you know, take off from work. Use sick days, whatever you can. Just don't be here from midnight to midnight on Monday. The church is taking you down with them. Like I said, they'll come back. We own the land. We've got filthy rich money. We own you. Unix now will be slaves. And so I don't know how far down they're intending. You know, this is Joseph. This was before Utah was even created, which... He, he knew enough to know, I think. It's pretty psycho how this all worked out. Because either there's a God who knows and Joseph Smith knows or just God knows. <laughs> and Joseph Smith just got lucky. But, uh, yeah, this, the whole signs in the heavens 
are directly tied to Utah and the presidents. So yeah, get out of Utah, guys. That's the warning from Joseph Smith. And I know you blame Joseph for everything about this church, which means you vindicate Brigham as innocent. He's just obeying Joseph. Seriously, you fell for that, huh? Joseph is warning you too. Get out of Utah. Don't be anywhere near here. And it's sad because there's obviously people we love here in Utah. And we don't want them to, to be murdered by the church. But I mean, what would you do if you found out the secret plot and all you had was YouTube? So, don't hearken at your own risk. <sighs>